Life's tough when you're a multi-talented YouTuber who can clap, talk, and knows things about gemstones. All right, let's just, let's figure out what's in this. How about that? Oh, dear guacamole. What is it? <laughs> the radioactive. Oh, this is gonna be fun. All right, so I'm kind of nervous. Radioactive, am I gonna like turn yellow? Am I gonna turn green? You gotta be careful of green things. What? I shouldn't say be careful of green things. You gotta be careful, guys. I remember one time I was sitting in the gem room and I hear this not that's really embarrassing. I'm not gonna go on YouTube. It was like this beeping sound. I was like, holy moly, what is this? And someone said, oh, that's a Geiger counter. I was like, holy guacamole, something's radioactive. And I left the room. It doesn't, I mean, I, I don't know. My hands aren't hot. I don't feel like anything's gonna happen. I'm still the same. I'm not like green. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. What the? Can I touch it? Can I just like turn over the box? Am I allowed to talk? All right. All right, nothing else in here. All right, I feel like I'm a cat, like batting this. I think this is lead. Probably has something to do with gemology because we put radioactive gemstones in lead. This is really heavy. Why is there tape on it? Why is it blue? Tape on No, really? Am I, am I gonna, is this okay for me to touch this? All right, this is 3.41 carats. What? is this, guys? All right, we got a green stone. Pull it out of there. I don't really want to pull it out of here. I don't know, it could be a zircon, it could be a diamond. Oh Lord, who would know? Who could I call to tell me what this is? Christopher. Christopher's coming in today, guys. We've got radioactive things, we've got lead pipes, we have plastic bags, and I don't know if I'm protected or not, but who cares because we're gonna bring Christopher on and he's gonna talk to us all about radioactive things. Let's see this one here. It's, it's not that bad. So, okay, uh, what is it? I guess zircon. You guessed correctly for zircon. Zircon can be radioactive. Di um, green diamonds. Green diamonds. Blue topaz is irradiated. Is irradiated, yes. Uh, a lot of the fancy colors of diamonds can be get their fancy colors through irradiation as well. Right. And then subsequent heating. And there's kind of two types of irradiating, natural and then what humans do. So do you yes. want to tell us a little bit more about all that jazz? Early on, somebody discovered this neat little property that if you took a diamond and you buried it in radium salts, for about a year, it would achieve this lovely, lovely green color. First of all, lead pipe. Tell me about the lead pipe. So this is actually what we call a lead pig. Uh, they use them in the nuclear industry to uh, store radioactive material. Lead actually blocks uh, a lot of radioactivity. You were correct in what you were saying earlier about the plastic bag uh, blocking some of the radioactivity. They typically radiate in alpha, beta, and gamma. The alpha particles can be stopped by something as small as like a two or three pieces of paper, whereas beta particles would take something more like just a thin sheet of aluminum, but even a thin sheet of aluminum would stop them. Gamma particles are stopped by significant amounts of lead or concrete. Even a thin shielding of lead would completely shut out the gamma from something this small. We use a thicker one just to make sure. So with a piece like this, basically at a distance of say about here, even a Geiger counter is not gonna pick up any radioactivity. So when Wait, it's- Wait, pause, what's a Geiger counter? Geiger counter is a device by which we measure the radioactivity of a gemstone, typically expressed as counts per minute. So every time a radioactive particle hits the detector, it clicks or beeps, and the rapidity of that clicking or beeping is what tells you how much radioactivity All right, so I did my emitting. Geiger counter impression mm -hmm. earlier. Do That's really, really hot. Otherwise, it'd just be. Oh, really? Mine was mad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we talked about how to store it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me a little bit about zircon and we'll tell our, our mm -hmm. lovely audience what makes zircon radioactive and why. Typically it's traces of either uranium or thorium. Okay. And uh, touching back on the storage, uh, again, something mildly radioactive like this, you could actually store that out on a shelf mm -hmm. and you wouldn't really have much of a problem. Any radioactive mineral is uh, going to emit radon gas because the radioactivity going into the air will oh, do cool. that. If it's in a well-ventilated area, shouldn't be a problem. If you do store it in something like the pig or an otherwise uh, sealed box, then you wanna make sure that you open that in a well-ventilated area so that the radon gas can, this can ventilate out. This room is not well-ventilated. It's okay, this one was actually opened before you opened it, so it was already well. It was already well put out before you had it. In. This is not that radioactive, guys. I'm just yanking Christopher's chain. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about how Earth makes a stone radioactive and mm -hmm. how 
we make stones really well. In nature, typically the most common ones that we see in gemology is uh, with either traces of uranium or thorium. Those are decaying, so they're losing energy. That radiant energy is going out, and a lot of the times it'll actually damage the stone. This one's actually quite clean, so it's it's nice and sharp and crisp, just like you would expect from a nice zircon gemstone. So this one actually hasn't been damaged by the radiation. It's one thing when you see a bright green gemstone and you see that it looks like there are cloudy areas in it, that's one clue there that you might have a metamic zircon. And what has happened there is the radiation has literally attacked the crystal structure. It's shoving different atoms out of the way and out of their positions instead of it retaining its crystal structure there. The the crystal structures actually become amorphous like glass, so there's just atoms all over the place, and you can see that just even with your naked eyes or a loop. Gee whiz, Christopher, what does amorphous mean? Amorphous means that it does not have a crystal structure, so if you have water, water would be amorphous because it's all just the molecules around there, but once you freeze it, it actually has a crystal structure. Okay, so basically, if you have a gemstone that's in Mother Earth and it's host rock, if there is a, you know, maybe uranium mm -hmm. nearby or thorium, that radioactive material material is going to seep into the gemstone mm -hmm. and it will change it. Natural radiation also affects uh, some stones like uh, amethyst. Amethyst okay. has to have the presence of iron, but there also has to be some radiation. And you, you get some of them that basically are radioactive and some that have achieved their color because they have been irradiated, right. but they do not have lingering radiation. Right. They're so not currently radiating themselves. Some stones, you know, may, they may have been irradiated, you know, millions of years ago and there's nothing to worry about now. Some stones might still be hot. Okay, so we talked about natural radiation. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about man-made. Again, we had talked about earlier about burying the diamonds in the radium salts, and when you do that over time, then the diamond becomes green from exposure to the radium salts. That actually does transfer to the diamond, and those diamonds themselves can be radioactive for a thousand years or more. Okay. Uh, I'd heard a story of one guy who had detected one in a gem store and had to call the Nuclear Regulatory Commission who confiscated the stone, and I believe the person still owns the stone, and they can visit it for the next thousand years or so until it's... Okay. Okay, no, that anymore. doesn't happen often. <laughs> I've been in this industry 10 years. So irradiation is a treatment. Yeah. But if something is irradiated, that doesn't mean mm -hmm. it's radioactive. The next one that they typically did was using a cyclotron. And that's literally where you have like a nuclear reactor. And we're just going to set these gems over here in the corner and see what happens. Those uh, would also gain color from that. But you would uh, have a cool down period. And then okay. they would be safe to wear. Typically what's used now is a linear accelerator or cobalt 60. A linear accelerator. Uh, basically fires a narrow beam uh, through the stone and that again changes the color uh, oftentimes like with uh, topaz it'll change the topaz from colorless to brown and then it's actually the heating controlled heating process that changes it from brown to blue cobalt 60 is another form of radiation that they use to treat stones it's also used in the food industry all of your spices in your spice rack go through what they call cold pasteurization and that's uh, when they're exposed to cobalt 60 it's irradiated to kill off any bacteria there and those are fine literally like minutes afterwards yeah. you know so next day they're like completely fine so let's afterwards. talk about the cool down period it's mm -hmm. called half-life mm -hmm. you want to explain a little bit more half-life basically is where each stone basically decays at a certain rate and it decays it loses half of its uh, radioactivity over a certain time period if the stone was radiating with a half-life of say a month every period it would lose half of its radiation where's the box we, we haven't had her open anything in in a while now i'll be very interested to see what's in here Two. Can I touch it? Yeah. Is it radioactive? Yeah. Is it mine? No. Yes. <laughs> nice How try. radioactive is this? Very mildly. This one is actually one that's used in jewelry. It? So it's Hey, very, this very is mild. so cool. The red mineral is what we're looking at here, and that's a mineral called eudialite. Never would have guessed that in a million years. <laughs> okay, am I okay? You're totally fine. Always, however, after you help wash your hands. Okay. You know, just because Guys. even with, with very mild little things, you don't want particulates on there, wash your hands before you touch your face, your eyes, or anything. This is one of my favorite things about radioactive gemstones is very often they are very, very pretty. What else is in here? Uh, the, I'm honestly not sure if we got maybe a little calcite, um, what the other minerals are here, but the important thing I want to show you is another fun aspect of radioactivity and what it does with the color. If we can get a light in here and if we can turn the lights out, I'm going to show you something really, really cool with this Can one. we? Can we do it? Yeah. Yes. Do we need to light? All right, so you can see it's glowing at the mm -hmm. red spots or the white spots. It looks like they're glowing orange. Mm -hmm. the, ma uh, the matrix is the cyanite. It's a little bit brighter, but that magenta, that really, really deep magenta color you're seeing 
is uh, the Udiolite. That's one of my favorite things uh, that you were asking about uh, radioactive gems is they get really, really cool colors. <laughs> I was going to really, say, really cool, cool story, bro. Do you tell it? With... <laughs> Oh yeah, it's, it's a party trick. All right, what's next? More color. Let's see what else we can find. So for this next one, I'm going to make something disappear. And for that, I need my magic wand. Are you ready? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna get my magic wand. No, that's a Geiger counter. All right, here's my magic wand. No, it's a Geiger counter, and it's not a magic bibbity, wand. And bibbity, bobbity, boom. No, magic. I don't believe that anymore. <laughs> All right, Geiger counter. So it looks a, like something out of Ghostbusters. It does, and uh, but we we're looking for radioactivity, not ectoplasmic residue. Ready? Let's <laughs> yes. open this up. Three, two, one. All right. Well, <laughs> go ahead and take it out of the box. You're the unboxing expert. So this is a uh, meter <laughs> that like uh, gauges the radioactivity. I'm gonna turn it on. It cracks me up. So first thing that you wanna do with one of these is you wanna just measure the background radiation. So you don't wanna point it at what it is that you're actually wanting to measure. No. You just wanna, yeah, there's nothing here. It's just like very intermittent beeps. So then you wanna take this and put it uh, like- Wow, can, there's something, feels weird. All right, so you can tell from right here, it's not picking up anything, but watch as you get closer. Mm -hmm. So this one is registering at approximately 500 counts per minute. Not something you'd want to wear in jewelry every day, but still all right to have in your collection in your case. Look guys, I'm not radioactive. No. This measures though, this doesn't emit anything. This basically has a material that is sensitive to the radioactive particles. And so when a radioactive particle hits it, it beeps as you get it close they're emitting, but they lose a lot of energy very quickly. And that's why the radiation doesn't actually come out as far as we're sitting. It loses so much energy so fast that you can only detect it when it's right on top of it. All right, so this one I'm gonna show you is, uh, look at the gemstone here and we'll show it to the camera here in a second. What do you see there? You see- Oh, I see so, lines. Yeah, you see lines. Christopher, please tell so, us what the lines are. So these are, <laughs> She's not gonna stop with that. What we're seeing here are metamic lines. And what that is, is these are uh, lines and areas in the stone where the crystal structure has actually been attacked by the uranium and actually turned the crystal structure of the zircon to morphous. Again, you can see it with the naked eye just in those little areas there. But this one has absolutely lovely color again, which is one of the things I love about the radioactive gems. All right, one Three. more. No, give me Three, two, one. Oh, oh, I love this guy. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is blue topaz. Mm -hmm. or what do we call this thing? Uh, the barrel, the, the big barrel. blue barrel. Big blue blair, it's not barrel. A big blue barrel. This one is an example of lovely color that has been induced by radio, uh, radioactivity. See, radioactivity. It has been irradiated, thing. but it is not radioactive. Okay. This one started off as more clear or pale, went to smoky, and then through controlled heating, achieved this lovely, lovely color that we have here today. So take a close look at that color. We can thank radioactivity for this. Christopher what do you want to take a closer look at? Well, both of these, and again, you've got blue, we've got green, we've got red, and again, just you get such an incredible color spread amongst all the radioactive minerals. Radioactive Natalie. Maybe I will have more superpowers on the next video. Until then, don't forget to like and subscribe. You don't want to miss out. Maybe we'll have some more radioactive gemstones coming up next. I'm definitely not wearing this. Sorry.